Scientists managed to create one of the most incredible, but at the same time scary devices ever made by taking advantage of advanced material science and letting an artificial intelligence design such a device beforehand. Micro-sized cameras offer enormous promise for detecting issues in the human body and enabling sensing for ultra-small robots, but previous techniques generated blurry, distorted pictures with restricted field of view. Princeton University and the University of Washington researchers have now conquered these challenges with an ultra-compact camera the size of a coarse grain of salt. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what incredible pictures this camera has already managed to take, how scientists actually created such a tiny camera in the first place, and finally, what the emergence of microscopic devices could mean for society and their respective industries. According to the researchers, the novel technique can create sharp, full-color images on par with a standard compound camera lens 500,000 times bigger in volume. The technology might enable minimally invasive endoscopy using medical robots to detect and treat illnesses, as well as enhance imaging for other robots with size and weight limits, thanks to a collaborative design of the camera's hardware and computer processing. Thousands of such cameras might be deployed in arrays for full scene sensing, thereby converting surfaces into cameras. While a standard camera employs a series of curved glass or plastic lenses to concentrate light rays, the new optical system is based on a technology known as a metasurface, which can be manufactured in the same way that a computer chip is. The metasurface is only half a millimeter across and is studded with 1.6 million cylindrical posts, each around the size of the human immunodeficiency virus which is commonly called HIV. Each post has a distinct shape and operates similarly to an optical antenna. To accurately form the complete optical wavefront, the design of each post must be varied. The interactions of the posts with light, along with machine learning-based algorithms, result in the highest quality photos and largest field of vision for a full-color metasurface camera built to date. The combined design of the optical surface and the signal processing algorithms that create the picture was a crucial advance in the camera's development. According to Felix Haida, the study's senior author and an assistant professor of computer science at Princeton, this improved the camera's performance in natural light conditions, as opposed to previous metasurface cameras, which required the pure laser light of a laboratory or other ideal conditions to produce high-quality images. The pictures recorded by their technique were compared to the results of prior metasurface cameras as well as photos captured by a typical compound optic that utilizes a series of six refractive lenses. With the exception of some blurring at the frame's corners, the images from the nano-sized camera were equivalent to those from the typical lens system, which is more than 500,000 times bigger in volume. Other ultra-compact metasurface lenses have suffered from significant picture distortions, tiny fields of vision, and a limited capacity to capture the complete spectrum of visible light, a technique known as RGB imaging because it blends red, green, and blue to generate distinct colors. Designing and configuring these small microstructures to achieve what you want has been a challenge, said Ethan Sang, a computer science PhD student at Princeton who co-led the work. It's difficult for this specific purpose of taking big field of view RGB photos because there are millions of these minute microstructures, and it's not apparent how to build them optimally. Shane Colburn, co-lead author, took on this task by developing a computational simulator to automate testing of various nano antenna designs. Because of the large number of antennas and the complexities of their interactions with light, this sort of simulation can use huge quantities of memory and time, according to Colburn. He created a model that accurately approximated the picture generation capabilities of metasurfaces. Colburn carried out the research as a PhD student at the University of Washington Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, where he is currently an affiliate assistant professor. He also oversees system design at Tunoptics, a Seattle-based firm developing metasurface imaging technology. Tunoptics was co-founded by Colburn's graduate mentor Arka Majumdar, an associate professor in the ECE and physics departments at the University of Washington and a co-author of the work. Materials informatics may be applied at every point of the experimental process, as seen in the infographic below. There are a variety of possible benefits, including as finding new species or connections, extracting value from existing data, and establishing use case IP on existing chemicals, 
but in most situations, it is all about reducing time to market and delivering a competitive edge. It is impossible to quantify this quicker time to market, but it is critical for external corporations to demonstrate and justify any investment. Many people claim to have comprehensive instances of reducing millions of candidates and or thousands of tests to hundreds, if not tens, of answers or iterations. The key issue is the materials dataset's limitations. This is not the same as detecting items in driverless vehicles or powerful internet search engines. Materials science carries with it a slew of unique challenges. Because the data is generally sparse, high-dimensional, biased, and noisy, comprehending the uncertainty in the suggested output is critical. Projecting out into the unknown is extremely difficult given the clustered, complicated data. There are several techniques to coping with tiny datasets, including developing one through high throughput experimentation, using other data sources, and, most crucially, incorporating domain expertise. The rapidly expanding smart home sector has a significant security issue, and Ring's product range is one of the most prominent instances. The Amazon-owned firm sells doorbells and in-home security cameras that are internet-connected and allow owners to see video feeds remotely. End-to-end -end encryption will be added to some of its devices for the first time, two years after Amazon purchased the firm and six years after the company's main doorbell camera product was initially introduced. During that period, the firm has faced a number of security difficulties, including illegal access to user feeds and dubious connections with law enforcement agencies, which have sparked worries about extrajudicial surveillance. This sort of camera has a troubled history of security and privacy concerns, the most prominent of which occurred following Amazon's acquisition of the firm. In 2019, a series of security breaches resulted in hackers taking over user accounts and, in some cases, communicating to them via the system. While Ring systems are password protected, security experts discovered that there is no system in place to detect numerous dubious login attempts. As a result, attackers may easily brute force systems by guessing passwords or working with information gained from past data breaches. A weakness that exposed Wi-Fi information locally, including usernames and passwords, was also uncovered, however it does not appear that it was ever utilized in an attack. Amazon has now corrected these flaws, but end-to-end -end encryption provides a considerably better safeguard against any future comparable concerns. According to a corporate blog post, stored video is already encrypted on Ring's cloud infrastructure, but it will now be secured in transit to authorized user devices as well. Haida and his colleagues are currently attempting to improve the camera's computational capabilities. They would aim to include capabilities for object detection and other sensing modalities important to medicine and robotics in addition to enhancing image quality. Haida also sees ultra-compact imagers being used to generate surfaces as sensors. We could turn specific surfaces into ultra-high-resolution cameras, eliminating the need for three cameras on the back of your phone and transforming the entire back of your phone into one gigantic camera. In the future, we may think of whole new ways to construct gadgets, he stated. So, what is your opinion on this tiny, but also high-quality camera which could potentially be put in any place for any possible reason? Do you believe that the positives outweigh the possible privacy concerns? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to know what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.